Today we're making one of my favourites. It is a Middle Eastern dish. It is baba ganoush made with aubergine or eggplant. So we're going to take a knife, give that a bit of a stab, just to make sure that the skin doesn't explode in the oven during the cooking process. We're then going to put it in our air fryer with a little bit of greaseproof paper on, let's say, 185 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, and then we're going to check it. Lots of people have asked me where I get my recipe ideas from. Well, I am a, just a really keen home cook. And when I used to travel a lot with work on business, instead of going out for meals and things like that, on a, if I had a weekend over, say I'd flown to Taiwan and then I was heading to Japan, instead of just hanging around in expensive restaurants, I would book a cookery lesson with a local. I'd go to their house, looking back now, it all seems a little bit dodgy, <laughs> but I would go to their house and I'd have cookery lessons and then I would sit with them and I would eat the food that we'd made. One of the most magical times for me was in Taiwan when I went to this lady's house and we made enough dumplings for about 30 people. I think I fed her family for that whole weekend. Mm -hmm. And my the kind of secret skill is that I can imagine flavours. So what I do is I go to the market, I see what's in season, and then I think about what be, would be a good use for that vegetable. Today I chose baba ganoush because if you love hummus, you will love baba ganoush. It's a very, very similar recipe, but it's using aubergine, so I can't wait for you to try it if you haven't tried it already. You're going to need the juice of one lemon. You can actually add the zest as well if you like, but I've already taken the zest off this lemon. I used it for a risotto yesterday. So the juice of one lemon. I'm just prepping everything whilst the aubergine is still cooking. It's actually a really, really simple recipe. It's only a few ingredients. So into the pestle and mortar, I have put four roasted garlic cloves. Now what I like to do is when I'm frying something else, so yesterday I was frying some mushrooms, I put some extra garlic cloves in there and then as soon as they were browned, I took them out and popped them in the fridge so that I could use them in this recipe today. But you can use fresh garlic cloves. I probably only use one or two, but I've got four or five roasted garlic cloves here. Now into my little pestle and mortar, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and some cumin seeds and then I'm going to crush those up ready to join the aubergine when it's cooked in this bath of garlicky cumin deliciousness. Okay so this just happened. <laughs> I put a chair down and ginger jumped up and then Birdie wanted to jump up as well so now I have two assistants this is Ginger, she is 10 this year. I thought she was 10 last year, she was actually 10 this year. And this is Birdie, here she is, this is Birdie. And she is four and we rescued her three years ago this week. So she was up for rehoming and we were so lucky to get her from the Rescue Society in the UK. They're both Hungarian Vishla, which that means a Hungarian pointer. They're used for hunting. Let me get Birdie in because she's so cute. They're used for hunting, but they make the most incredible family pets. But if you're thinking of getting one, know that they need lots and lots of exercise, tons of exercise. So they're gonna keep you really, really fit. I've just taken my aubergine out of the air fryer. It's been in for 25 minutes. You want it really, really soft. And so I'm going to leave it in the greaseproof paper. And then I'm going to give it a good old bash to get it started before I put it in my stone bowl. Now this skin was really, really tough, so it came off really easily, so you don't have to do any peeling, you just pick it out. And then I've smushed it with the rolling pin. My rolling pin broke, but actually it's more useful without the uh, handles on. So give that a good smush. And now I'm gonna pour it into the garlic mixture, making sure there's no dog's tongues on my food. Just slide that in there. This is what it looks like now. It's going to change colour as soon as we add the tahini, which I'm going to add now. So I asked my husband to get me some tahini and he was like, oh, I've got a, stop it. <laughs> I've got a much cheaper jar than you, but he got a tiny jar and I get through lots of this. Obviously you're gonna need that in hummus, but let's put two big spoons. This is just a dessert spoon of tahini. Or tahina. 
You can put this in the liquidizer, but I like the texture from the aubergine. All we need to add to that now is some lemon juice, as much as you like, and some olive oil. And then we're gonna smush that round a little bit more and it's ready. I'm going to put it in quite a shallow bowl so that everyone can get some pita bread and scoop it up out of the bowl. Make some little indentations so that when you drizzle the olive oil on, it makes some nice little pools. Some smoked paprika. You can use coriander, mint, but I'm using black leaf parsley today. Oh my goodness, it smells incredible, so here goes. Mm. Oh wow, that was amazing. The only thing I could have done to make this taste insanely good is to have roasted the aubergines on a charcoal fire. Buckwheat pancake, let's give that a good dunk. I love eating with my fingers. I actually think food tastes different when you eat with your fingers. Mmm. Stop eating, it's not lunchtime yet. Come back soon for some more whole food, slow food, plant based deliciousness.